right, here we go. Another episode of Canada on the Rocks. I am your host, Fadi Kudair, local realtor here with Sutton Group Ottawa. And today we are joined with Ashley Max Seorsa Essentials. Tell me a little bit more about the name. Where did it come from? Seorsa is Gaelic for freedom. And so it's a nod to my Scottish heritage. Mm-hmm. I'm originally from the east coast of Canada, Cape Breton Island, which is very deep in uh, Scottish uh, roots. And when I was thinking a name for my business, I wanted it to be reflective of my heritage. Freedom Essentials is was quite fitting. And I thought, essentially, what we are all looking for is freedom in our lives. And so yeah. that is where Say Orsa Essentials came from. So tell me a little bit more about the premise of the business. What is it all about? What do you do? Maybe that elevator pitch or the 10,000 foot overview, whichever way that you want to kind of bring it out. Yeah. So in my business, I help women predominantly and some men tap into their inner guidance and use this inner guidance to help support them and guide them in their everyday life. And so some people will call this intuition. Some people will call it inner guide. Some people will call it that gut instinct. And really, um, most people are disconnected from that inner guide. And what I essentially do as a mentor, intuitive mentor, um, facilitator, is I help people tap back into that and use that guidance within themselves. So why would someone want to hire you? Someone would hire me because they are feeling disconnected. We live in a very busy, chaotic world where we're constantly running and pushing and striving. And this is an invitation to connect into yourself, to connect into your inner guide and really listen to that intuitive messages that are coming through and use those messages to help guide you and make those decisions. So it brings more clarity, more calmness, more groundedness into your life. I've heard the other day, like just watching one of those reels or what have you, and like we're, we're living in a society of like a life dysmorphia. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think those are individual perceptions. I think we label a lot of things and we do label things because of how we've been raised. You know, when we are babies, if you think back to when you're a baby or you just look at the children in your life, you see that there's so much love and contentment within them. They don't have a care in the world. And as we grow and as children grow, they start being exposed to people and places and teachers and friends and society in general. And so each time you are, I guess, approached with this, you have a label then attached to it. And so as we grow older in our 20s and 30s and 40s, we have all these labels and some of them may not be true to who we are at that soul level. And so those are, you know, labels and filters that we put on ourselves. And so um, how we see ourselves is then how we're going to be reflected out and how we see the world. So in your opinion, like how would someone possibly engage or get in and, you know, bring you on board, if you will, to work with you? And what are, what's the process looking like? Yeah, so I created a process called The Pathway because I wanted to take the fear out of decision making for people because, again, We are so overconsumed with media and that buying, like buy this now, buy this program from me and you'll get $10,000 worth of promos if you get it by midnight. Mm -hmm. And none of that really felt like it aligned to me and what I wanted to offer to people around the world. And so I created this pathway and the pathway is a suite of offerings because we are souls on our own journeys and When we are leading with our soul, we are not ever on the wrong pathway. So there's many different pathways that you can take. And the suite of offerings that I have are different pathways that you can take no matter where you're at on your journey. So this could look like one-on-one intuitive guidance with me. It can look like joining one of my ceremonies or gatherings in person or virtually. It can look like a one-on-one soul attunement session, which is energy healing and connecting into your Akashic records and receiving guidance in that way. And it really is for people to look at the suite of offerings and tune into their intuition and see where their guidance is leading them to, which pathway. 
if you were to break it, like let's just say you want to break sort of the process into multiple steps or multiple layers, what would you say the most important part of this whole process? I think the most important part is tuning into that awareness. I think the first step is quieting the noise and the chaos in the external world and getting quiet and seeing where your guidance is, because that is when your guidance comes through. Your intuition cannot communicate with a crowded mind. It can't communicate when there's a lot of thoughts and chaos going on within your own mind. And it's so important to be able to take that time and that space and quiet your mind down. And now some people say, well, I don't know how to meditate or how would I do this? It is simply taking a breath, stopping, connecting into your breath, taking a couple of cleansing breaths, because that's going to immediately bring you back into the present moment. It's going to immediately connect you into your inner self, and it's going to quiet the noise. And the more you do this, the more consistent you can be with taking this time, the more you'll crave it and the more you'll want to do more of it. And as each time you do create that space and take those moments for yourself, that is when your intuition will be able to connect in. That is when your guidance will come in and your messages will come in. And I was just going to say, like, in, in your opinion, with all of the, the clients that you've worked with, what are some of the biggest hurdles that are affecting or preventing folks from connecting with their trust? I think there's some people who are afraid to be alone with their own thoughts or be afraid. Ooh, tell to, me about it. Yeah. To be quiet. There's so many people that just uh, have that sense of like boredom, if you will. Like they cannot be bored alone. Exactly. And that's what our society is missing right now. Our society is missing that opportunity to quiet and go inward and be with our own thoughts. And it's in those thoughts that you'll be able to discern mm -hmm. what is ego, what is intuition. Yeah. Be and I think it's, if, if, I, if you don't mind me interrupting there, I, I think it's also we're worried about the labeling, going back yeah. to it, of you being a loner mm -hmm. or just, you know, wanting to be like lone wolf. If a lot of people use that term lone wolf. Mm -hmm. But to me, I think it's it's more about just, like you said, just really connecting and digging a little bit deeper. Mm -hmm. How does that process look like when someone wants to connect and, and kind of just dig a little bit deeper, sit with their own thoughts? What What do you suggest would be the best way to do it? The best way is to, first of all, create, carve out that time, make that space. And again, it can be as short as a couple of breaths to start and then gradually build your yourself up. When I first started meditating and doing my own daily rituals, I would start and stop, start and stop because I was listening to what all the gurus were saying, that this is how you meditate. And I, and I quickly found out that there's no right or wrong way to meditate. Everybody is going to be different. So sitting and creating that space and just letting go, letting go of the labels, yeah. letting go of that negative self-talk, because those are simply not true. Those are thoughts that, you know, we've been created within our own mind. And the mind is, it's a very busy place. And um, the, no, mind, the mind <laughs> is, is, I often say the mind is the playground for our ego. Yep. And how you can tell when you have the thoughts coming to your mind, what is ego, what is intuition is, your ego will always be almost like that self-destruction, right? Negative, fearful, talking down, Idle. entitled, feeling rushed, like I must make this decision today or else I'm going to lose out. No, no. And your intuition is this slow, steady, calming voice. It's never rushed. It's never forcing. Someone once told me, someone actually really close to me once told me you're the most entitled, unentitled person I've ever met. Mm. And I, it's just, it's been kind of nagging at me. I'm trying to figure out what that means exactly. And I think maybe I'm wrong. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that you can help me out with this one, that it's it's the ego mm -hmm. portion there. Is that, what are, what are your thoughts? Perhaps. I also don't really spend much time on what other people think yeah. of me. That's their business and not mine. So I would probably sit with it and, again, this is a nice exercise to tap into your intuition yeah. and say, how true is this? Is this true of me? Because you have an ego state and you have an intuitive state. Yeah. 
And that may align with your ego state, but that may not align with your intuitive state yeah. and who you truly are at the soul level. So I, I feel like a lot of the times we have this sort of internal dialogue with ourselves and it's, it's always, it's a bit of a, a fight within the, the mind between the two. How do you discern which one is healthy and which one is not? Yeah, you. it's important to have balance the two for sure, ego and intuition. But again, discerning the two would be knowing what voice is speaking. How does the energy feel? Yeah. Do you feel calm? Do you feel rushed? Do you feel fearful? Do you feel anxious in like that, you know, fearful way, like something bad is going to happen? Yeah. That's your ego. But if it's calm and it's like, no, you know what? I, I surrender. I let go. I trust the timing of my life, trust the timing of how things are going to work out. And that would be your intuition. That would be just that surrender piece, that letting go and allowing that flow. Life is so much easier to live when you're in that state. Just sort of like a letting go state in a way where you're just believing in yourself, but also in the same time doing the work. And, and that's actually something that I wanted to kind of bring up as far as, you know, letting go and, and doing the work. Like what's what's the appropriate balance where essentially you're not holding on to things, but also in the same token, you're doing what you need to do to kind of move forward. Yeah. So I call it aligned action. So when you get, let's just say, an intuitive hit on something, so you have this knowing and you can't shake it. It's like with you when you go to sleep at night. It's with you when you wake up in the morning. It's like, you know, you should really do this thing you should do this podcast. And then it's not, there's nothing fearful around it. It's just, it's almost like a curiosity. And then you get the nudge that was like, oh, then you should book this space to do this podcast. And there's no rushing there. It's just like, okay, I'm going to make that call. I'm going to book that space and I'm going to do it. Yeah. And then that is taking that aligned action. So it's, it's tapping into your intuition and that's the feminine energy. And then the masculine energy of that is taking that aligned action, taking those steps and doing the thing. Yeah. So what got Ashley turned on to all of this? Tell me the story. Yeah. So we're going back probably uh, 2010, maybe 2009. And again, I knew that there was something more. I started meditation practice. I stopped a meditation practice. And it wasn't until I was in introduced to energy healing, to Reiki. And I thought, mm, okay, that's kind of cool, but I don't know. I'll, I have crystals at home. Maybe I can use the Reiki to charge my crystals. Mm -hmm. And I was introduced to a Reiki master. And I really, truly believe that the universe brought me into this moment in time because the steps that took for me to when I thought about it to when I got into it, um, you can't plan these with your logical mind. So I took my first level of Reiki and I thought, okay, this is fun. I'll charge my crystals with it. And then I quickly realized that I wasn't meant to just use this on my own. I was told by many mentors and healers that I was a healer and, um, you know, I had the ability to connect in to higher consciousness and um, I had the ability to use that to help others. And so I began from a curiosity standpoint to explore. And as I did, more doors started opening, more people started showing up in my life. And again, it was just this very natural flow of steps of these aligned action steps that I kept taking. And finally, I realized that I wasn't meant to keep this to myself, that it was meant to share it. And that's kind of, it's just been an evolution and it continues to be an evolution because our growth doesn't stop. I'm still learning and growing yeah. and, you know, opening up to more of my spiritual gifts that I have to offer. And in your opinion, you mentioned that you felt like you're a healer. What makes you or you know, what gives you that sort of intuition that you are a healer? Because I have the ability to connect into a higher consciousness and everybody does. I'm not special. Everybody is intuitive. Everybody has the ability to connect in. It's just not in everyone's path to do so in this life. And it is part of my pathway in this life to connect in and to use these um, spiritual gifts, if you will, to help others um, open to their own spiritual gifts of yeah. their own. 
And what are some of the sort of the main essentials parts of your practice as far as, you know, like I'm connecting with you, I, you know, I'm, I'm having this sort of difficult time in my life and I want to kind of understand what's going on. What are some of the, the things that you start working on? And then maybe you can break down the process a little bit. Yeah. So we will kind of go at it at different ways, intuitively guide it for sure. And that just means me talking like we're talking now. Energy is all around us. And so energy doesn't mean it's not bound by anything. Well, and so you and I, by talking here, we are exchanging energy unbeknownst to what our logic yep. mind is, right? And so I have the ability to connect in with other people's energies on that soul to soul connection. And so we do this through energy healing work where we connect in, you know, as we have a physical body, we also have an energetic body. Yeah. And, and you always feel it too. Like when you're sitting down talking to somebody right off the bat, you're like, I love their energy or I just, I don't know what it is about them. I just can't put my fingers on it, but I, something is off. Yes. And that's your intuition, right? And so we'll connect into the energy. And just as much as we need to take care of our physical body, we also need to take care of our energetic body. And so through the practice of energy healing, I connect in and I can do some energetic clearing and balancing up your chakras, which are part of your um, energetic system. These are so important because when our energetic body is not in balance, it can manifest into physical ailments. Yeah. And so we never want it to get there. And so we'll do, we'll work on energetics. We'll work on, um, you know, channel messages. The Akashic Records is your soul's blueprint. And it's this, think of it as a metaphysical library of your soul's experiences, past, present, and future possibilities. And so everybody has a record. And I have the ability to connect into those records and channel through messages to my clients guidance and it's always filled with light and love um, there's nothing to fear there because it is your own soul's records mm -hmm. and so my clients get tremendous amounts of clarity and reassurance and comfort from connecting into their own akashic records and receiving yeah. that guidance ashley thank you so much for for this thank you for making the time and, and kind of sharing the the healing energy that you have with the folks out there and I'd uh, invite the folks out there to, you know, look into your business and see what they can do to uh, help themselves find the intuition in there. Um, and for, for you guys out there, if you uh, like what you see, please don't forget to hit the like button. Subscribe so you can get more and more episodes about this and learn more about businesses around the city, city of Ottawa here, and learn that Ottawa is not a boring city. There's so much more. And again, Ashley, thank you so much for uh, joining us and the next episode. Appreciate it. Thank you.